four. I think you're going to like chapter four. Chapter four deals with applications of differentiation. And you will say, what are you talking about? Everything you've done in chapter three was applications of differentiation. OK, I'm going to add this. More applications of differentiation. Because everything we did in chapter three was applications of differentiation. Implicit differentiation. It was um, logarithmic differentiation. Everything. Everything was applications, right? Um, related rates. Um, differentials. Everything was applications of differentiation. Now we are going to talk about more. Okay. So what are those? One of them is a very important topic, graphing. And you can say, what does graphing have to do with differentiation? A lot. We are going to look at and study the first derivative. We are going to look and study the second derivative. Those two will say a lot about the function, a lot, helping us to graph the function. So it's a long story. We're going to talk about it. The second one is called or deals with optimization. And you can say, what is this? What are we talking about? Well, when we talk about optimization, which is a big topic in mathematics, like algebra is, like trig is, like calculus, right? Uh, optimization deals with max-min. Max-min of functions. So for example, you may have an employer that asks you find a max-min for minimum for cost or maximum for cost, uh, maximum for profit, maximum for revenue. So all this deals is dealt with optimization. And the, the third big, big application is Newton's method. So we're going to deal with these three topics in chapter four. And of course, a few other things, uh, two theorems that I'm going to present to you. And um, that's pretty much it. Uh, a very important topic, yes. L'Hopital's rule. But you can say you already did this. Yes, we did. We did not wait for L'Hopital's rule for 0 over 0 and infinity over infinity. We did not. However, if you remember, we have seven indeterminate cases. And we saw three of them. We did not see the products. So these were the ratios. This is the difference. We also have product and powers. I will present them when we get to them. But these are seven. OK? Total of seven. Um, one product and three powers. OK, so we're going to start slow by talking about something called local, local or relative max or min of a function, and something called global or absolute, <coughs> sorry, max min. So we're going to start with that. And then I'll explain um, the next step. But right now, I'm going to look at a few graphs with you. One is enough, but we may look at more in the book. Let me see. How am I there? OK, OK. OK. So let's see. Let's say we have this function. So this is our f of x. I'm sure you notice these points. I know you notice that the function is increasing here. It's in decreasing here. And it's increasing here. 
I know you notice that. Then I'm going to look at something that we've known or for a while. Tangents. Tangent. 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 More than enough. Okay. So let's suppose I have this point. Well, let's say is negative three comma two. This is the function. This point is negative three comma two. I just picked two coordinates. And I would like to determine the instantaneous rate of change at negative three or same thing, slope of tangent line at three, negative three comma two. How do I determine this? They are the same. The instantaneous rate of change at negative three is the same with the slope of the tangent line at negative three. I would like to determine these. They would be the same thing. How do I determine them? Very important because this is what we've studied so far. Say it again. Say it again, baby. <laughs> Differentiate. your baby. Yes, you are the baby. So, what is it? I am a baby. Differentiate. Yes. I what what am I differentiating? I know it's silly, but I want I'd like to hear that answer. <coughs> so then the slope of this line yeah. I'm gonna mark. is yeah. F F uh, <laughs> F prime. I need to do that. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, I'm completely distracted. F prime of x? Yes, of and x is? Oh, in this case, sorry, negative 3. That's it. Awesome. Good. Now, notice one very important thing. Is this a, a positive slope or a negative slope? Positive. Good. Is this a positive or a negative slope? And this. So, in other words, the derivative is a positive number when the function is... when the function is doing what? Yes. So the first derivative, if I know that the, the rate of change or the first derivative is positive, I know that the function is increasing, and vice versa. If the function is increasing, then the first derivative has to be positive. Awesome. I would like to determine the slope of this line. M has to equal zero. Absolutely, because it's a horizontal line. Excellent. We're going to get to it in a minute. What do you think about the slope of these lines? Negative. Excellent. Thank you. Negative, which means the first derivative is negative. So what do you conclude that when the first derivative is negative, the function must be doing what? Decreasing. Decreasing and vice versa. 
if the derivative is negative, the first derivative is negative, then the function must be decreasing. So far, we established that. And of course, on the other side, you will say here again, the slope is zero. And here the slope is positive or the first derivative is positive. The function is automatically increasing or vice versa. Excellent. Now, obviously this is a maximum. We call it a relative or local. We use them interchangeably, whatever you want. Relative max, because I can show the open interval. What open interval? All points here, all y values here, maybe it's better to say that. On all y values on this side are smaller than this one. That's why this is a relative max. I can show the open interval. In other words, the function must exist on both sides for this point to be a relative max. The same thing here, the function exists on both sides. What do you think we're going to call this point? What will be the name of that point? Relative min. Relative min. If you prefer local, use local. Whatever you want, either one is fine. So that's one situation. Now, look at this situation. I'm emphasizing here something else. Here I had arrows, which means the function goes on forever. But here I have a full point. You will say again that this is a relative max because the function exists on both sides. I know you will say again, this is very clear that this is a relative min because the function exists on both sides. I will also say that this is the absolute for on this interval, the graph is clearly starting here and ending here. So on this, for this particular graph, this is also the absolute maximum. There is no other value higher than it. And of course here, this is the absolute minimum because there is no value lower than it. Final situation. You're going to say again that this is the relative and absolute max. But here, you can no longer say relative because you cannot show the existence of the function values on both sides. So the endpoints of the interval cannot be relative. In this case, it happens that it's an absolute minimum. This means nothing. It cannot be a relative, and it cannot be absolute. It cannot be minimum, because there is another one that's smaller than it, and it cannot be maximum. So this is nothing. The same thing here, nothing. So what is the difference between relative and absolute? Well, they can be at the same point, but the endpoints can never be absolute. I'm sorry. The endpoints can never be relative because I cannot show the open interval. I cannot show that the function exists on both sides. Any questions about the difference between relative and absolute? Any questions? Okay, now, how do we know where to look for max min. You can say graph it. No. No. We are learning how to do this for graphing. Not we, we don't graph to draw conclusions. Okay. So there is something called critical number. Some books call it value, some books call it, refer it directly to critical points, it doesn't matter. So what is a critical number? First of all, here's a, a very important note. 
if a function does not have critical numbers, number or numbers, it cannot have max min, one or the other, or both. If it has no critical numbers, it cannot have max min. We still don't know what critical numbers are in a minute. What if, if a function has critical number or numbers, there is no guarantee to have max min. Okay, let's analyze this and, and make sure we understand what it what it says. No critical numbers guaranteed no max min. Done. But if a function has critical numbers, uh, since I use the number sign, let me do this. So if it has critical numbers, I don't know we, if they change into, into max min. How do I do that? Study the sign of the derivative. That will tell us whether they are max or min or none of the above. Okay, first of all, let's discuss the critical numbers and where they come from. So critical numbers may come from two different sources. They may, they don't have to. One possible source is when the first derivative is zero. You can say, wait a minute, why, why? Here it is. Here it is y. The first derivative is 0 at the relative max. The first derivative is 0 at the relative min. So that's one possible source. And or you may find we may find functions that have critical numbers coming from both coming from this but not from this, coming from this but not from this, or none at all. So what is the second source? When the first derivative is undefined at a point where f of x exists or is defined, in other words. So I'm saying that, let me see my 